hay. Got to get the hay in there and Will Ferrell too. My name's Ryan Tamori. Welcome to a live pregame episode or show of the Pit Press Podcast. Happy to be here with you. I'm going to get to our panel and what an exciting day of basketball. UNM, um, that sounded very cliche. That's like all eyes on. It was a pretty awesome day of basketball, uh, especially in the Mountain West Conference and what's going on in Vegas. Um, Boise State. And UNM, the six and three seed, are uh, getting ready to tip off here in about half an hour. So much for that 9.30 Mountain Standard Time tip. Um, we're going to break it down all with you. Before I get to my panel, want to thank those that make this show possible. Turquoise Desert Tap Room, Abrazo Homes, and Affordable Solar. And you can also catch our other sponsors um, up on top. Uh, look, sorry, looking at the comments. Anyone know the spread flip from Boise being favored favorites to UNM? We're, yeah, we'll we'll get to that. I got to join. Uh, uh, I got to introduce my panel and the usual suspects, or as I like to steal from, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. The gang from all the way from the Bay Area played for Damian Segura at St. Pius. We'll get to Ed Nunez. Heartbreaking for uh, our St. Pius Sartans. Um, all the way from the Bay Area, Mr. Richard Thompson. Richard. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Just been waiting for this last game all day, watching these other Mountain West games and anticipation. So ready to go and uh, talk about this one and then see what happens. And you can follow him at NM Sports Capper. And uh, things have, I, I should have said, I should have queued up. Uh, it's going to be a bright, sunshiny day because our, our bets this afternoon and today it's been dismal. It's been down in the dumps. It's been creed six feet under, but today it's been pretty good. Uh, Mr. Jacob Neff, you can follow him on Twitter at NM Sports Capper. I don't know if I said that. How you doing, man, other than Boston College? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm trying to uh, give my focus to this and Boston College, um, but uh, ready to talk about this game. Like Rick said, been watching all the Mountain West games all day. Uh, it was, it's been great, so I'm excited for this one. Hopefully uh, UNM can show out tonight because I think they've got a great opportunity. I think you almost said Boston College there. But anyway, he is a voice of the Western New Mexico Mustangs, a Lobo fan since 1970. He's been at the pit for the last, what, 48 hours calling the state tournament, boys and girls basketball. Uh, it's a cathedral in this state, but his name is Mr. Ed Nunez. Ed, how you doing? Uh, 10 games in three days, got two more tomorrow, and then I'm flying out to Silver City to do softball games Saturday and Sunday. So it's a whirlwind, be back on Monday. But, uh, yeah, I'm, and it's the uh, Egg McMuffin game. Uh, Rick uh, had that the last couple of days, and it wasn't coined by Damian Segura. I asked Coach Segura, uh, Segura about that. It was actually Ray Rodriguez, uh, Jacob, uh, your former athletic director at Cibola. So either way, man, I'm on the red eye. Start just trying to keep my eyes open here. Um, I just love that a McMuffin saying, so I gave kudos to Damian Segura. Sorry about that. Um, to Mountain West, you know, I'm going to start with this. Uh, I normally don't care. Um, I think New Mexico state being good is good for the state of New Mexico. It's good for the rivalry with UNM. Um, obviously when <laughs> catch my catch going to backtrack, I was going to make something that was politically correct when you have sexual hazing and allegations that hap happened last year with Greg Heyer and you get an SMU death penalty um, that other than the game down South this year against UNM, which was a dent game saving layup um, things in Cruces have been kind of up and down for Jason Hooten in his first year in the quarterfinals of the conference USA tournament in their first year in conference USA play Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. That's another shirt I need to buy Neff. Uh, they downed the Aggies, the New Mexico State Aggies, 89-69. Q, Beavis, and Butthead there with that final score. Uh, so they are eliminated. Their season's over. Uh, I thought they played pretty tough um, down the stretch, but there you go. And very quickly, <laughs> whipper, whipping around, what happened today in the quarterfinals of the Mountain West Conference? Utah State, 87, Fresno State, 75 overtime. Fantastic game. Jacob, you had kind of said it. Fresno State had Utah State's number. Uh, Justin Hudson, his last game there, they have parted. He has parted ways with Fresno State University. They had a valiant effort. They got one game. They eliminated Wyoming. 
Great Osibor, 29 points, 17 rebounds, four assists. Neff, I'll go to you on that because you had mentioned they had their number when we were texting during that game today. Uh, just a very, very quick reaction to that, and then I'll ask Rick. Yeah, um, I mean, I was impressed with the way Fresno – you know, fought back throughout the game. There was a couple times where they, you know, even at the last like four minutes of the game, they were down, I think, eight points and then went on a NATO run to tie it. Um, to be honest with you, what kept Utah State in that game was how how many times Osapar got to the free throw line. It seemed like he shot like 22. For, I don't know how many he shot, but I would say he shot 23 throws at least. Um, and then, you know, just looking at that game, what really hurt them is when it went to overtime, there was so much foul trouble for Fresno. There was no way that they were going to be able to keep up with that, um, you know, just because I think almost every starter had four fouls. And then uh, the good thing, I think the one thing that Fresno did to Utah State and something that teams can look at is they, they ran a 1-3-1 one, one zone uh, in the second half, and it was really limiting Utah State to throw the ball into the paint. And they couldn't find Osabar in those uh, in those last five minutes of the game specifically. And what that did was it forced them to actually make some shots. Um, and um, you know they did it a couple times, but for the most part, it was pretty successful. So uh, looking forward, that might be a way to slow down Osabar uh, in the Mountain West Conference. I know San Diego State gets them next, but for the winner of either UNM and Boise or Colorado State now, um, that's something to watch moving forward. Rick, I just want to go to quickly your reaction to that game because it was a great way to start off the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think uh, Utah State missed having Falsalev out there. I'm not sure why he didn't play. I didn't have the volume oh, yeah. up, but um, he didn't play. But uh, off the off the bench, uh, Jackson had a nice game for Utah State with 16 points, so he kind of filled that void, and they were just able to hang on. Um, Fresno was just a little bit outmanned out there, but they gave it their full effort today. Great Osabor, 15 of 24 free throws. Uh, he went to the line 24 times. Um, they went 26 of 36 and shot 72%. I'm not wearing the hat tonight because I have, uh, I got a haircut and I don't look like I have a mullet afro. Um, San Diego State holds off UNLV in overtime the first two games of the day, 74-71 just cover baby uh dean thomas that's the big news whether he would return jacob i'm not trying to put you on the spot i always try to eke out you to get what you say when we talk off the record uh you're not impressed with san diego state and we're, we're not we're not here to hate uh i i'm the first to to say it i've always liked what san diego state has done it to me just this year Jaden Ledee, that game, Kurt Roth, who we had on for 505 Sports Venture Foundation, called San Diego State's style of playing hockey. So I jokingly, he's from Long Island, I jokingly call the San Diego State Aztecs the New York Islanders. I don't know. They're kind of painful to watch this year. I, I loved everything they did last year. To me, from a fan perspective, I'm not an analytical guy. I, I just like, it, it was painful. That game in the second half was a little bit better, and I think officiating's kind of sucked today. Um, but Jake, your thoughts on that game and your thoughts on the Aztecs. Yeah. Well, I thought that it was horrendous in the first half, both ways. You know, I think it was unfortunate Boone, one of the Boone brothers didn't get to play in this game. Um, you know that, I think that was a huge outcome. I think if he plays, um, it's a totally different situation. Obviously Dean and Thomas tried to do everything that he could in that game to, uh, wheel them to a victory, but he couldn't do it. Um, as far as the Aztecs, you know, just, it's all a D. I mean, just look at it. It's what 34 points today. Every time they needed a bucket, it was him. Um, you know, they they really couldn't hit any any shots um, down the stretch. It was mostly him. Uh, and then another thing was, I I thought that that you know the one big play of the game, and I know that Kruger tried to downplay it at halftime, but that was such a momentum switch at the end of the half being up eight with one second you pass in the ball to San Diego state. They're 0 for seven from three in the half. And then he hits like a, not a half court shot, but like probably about a 30, 35 footer uh, with like a running 30 to 35 footer to end the half. And you go from being up eight to only up five. And then within a matter of two or three minutes in the first half, I mean, in the second half, 
uh, they were already down by five. So he tried to play that off and say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a fight for another 20 minutes. Well, this game went to overtime. You could have used those three points. Um, so game, and it's funny, enough, in this last game, there was a huge play before half too. So hopefully there's no bonehead plays like that <laughs> coming into this game. It, it seems like those last two games, uh, huge plays right before half. Uh, shout out to our Delaware man, uh, George Washington Cross in the Delaware. Uh, Coach Tom Moser, he had tweeted out, UNLV is so talented, and he tweeted that out, tweeted this out many times this year. You can catch him on Top of the Mountain podcast. Uh, he knows his you-know-what. He tweeted out, UNLV is so talented, but they make so many boneheaded plays that just leave you scratching your head full of cliches tonight, I am. Um, uh, he, but – yeah, he he mentioned that, and I was like, "Yeah, they they did that a lot this year, uh, especially against Air Force." Uh, CSU survive uh, beats Nevada. Nevada beat them twice this year, I think, and obviously that Jared Lucas shot at activate Moby Moby Arena and, and mm -hmm. Fart Collins and Fort. Con I'm not dissing. I, I'm full of terrible jokes tonight. I, I uh, love been to Fort Collins. I love it. Defending myself there. Um, Jared Lucas with that, that like half court shot that beat them. Um, CSU beats Nevada 85, 78, Isaiah Stevens, 15, two and seven is his stat line. And I thought that he was, um, or excuse me, I thought that Colorado state probably played themselves into the NCAA tournament tonight. And another thing before we move on to U UNM and Boise state is, all the bubble teams that UNM needed to lose, they all won. Providence beat Creighton in the Big East in the Garden. The A-10 is a shit show. Um, everybody that is needed to lose did. Or excuse me, needed to win did. Um, so that's not good news for Lobo. So this is turning into a must-win game. Uh, it, uh the A is probably turning into a bid stealing league. I think Dayton will probably still be in in Richmond, and then whoever wins that tournament, Richmond got beat today, and Dayton got beat today, um, and St. John's beaten Seton Hall. Seton Hall, um, the fight in Tim Chavez's. That's an inside joke for Rick and I, but uh, beating the Pirates there in the Big East tournament pretty handily. They had been swept by Seton Hall during the regular season. Um, obviously, I don't know how much impact that has on UNM, but Seton Hall, I know, was on the bubble. Enough East Coast talk, and I'll start to Ed Nunez. What are you looking for tonight between Boise State and UNM? They beat us. Uh, well, Boise State won 89-79 the uh, last time, and and I think Jacob, you mentioned one three one zone. And uh, if you look, they beat us eighty six seventy eight here at the pit. They uh, packed it in. We couldn't shoot, and we had a poor shooting a second game. So um, they're they're an offensive rebounding team. We saw that against San Diego State. That was a heck of a game. Uh, was it last weekend when they beat uh, the Aztecs in overtime? Friday night. And, uh, was it Friday night? Yeah. Okay. So they 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 go to the boards hard. We've uh, the New Mexico has to keep them off the boards. Um, the last game, Stanley went for 24 and 13, Degenhart 23 and 4, Rice 16, 3 and 5, Agbo 17 and 12. I thought that Rice, uh, Coach Rice, went to his isolations with Degenhart, backed him in. He uh, he ran a lot of great stuff in the second half. House had a poor shooting game. Um, so I, I think New Mexico has to do something different. You know, Jacob, you mentioned uh, the 1 3 1 zone. Uh, New Mexico has struggled against that. What adjustments is Coach Patino going to make? This is in, in, in and I thought it was a must win either way. Even if those bubble teams hadn't won, I thought New Mexico has to win this game to get into the tournament. They know what they need to do. They played very well last night. Wire to wire win was shot with confidence. Uh, House was two of six from three after shooting four of twenty seven the games before. I think they can definitely win this game. Uh, your Boise State, you know, they beat them twice. You know, they always say it's hard to beat a three a team three times. You know, I, I don't know if you can throw that stat out the window. Um, the last time, Amzil, uh, zero points off the bench, so he's going to be needed to produce some numbers. Washington, good uh, numbers for him last night uh, in in a game that they're running away from. They, you know, they led wire to wire. He has fourteen off of the bench. They'll need him. So I, I think those things. Uh, it's real key to uh, the, the the rebounds, the defense, the digging in. 
And Rick, you mentioned that dig and get back and and don't turn your back. You know, on, uh, remain fundamental defensively. And there's those things there win you basketball games. Um, so they didn't shoot well the last two games against Boise State. Neither House nor Mashburn. They're going to need them to shoot. I thought House played pretty well last night. What what I saw, I thought he did a much better job. They'll need that kind of energy, the positive House tonight, if they're going to have a chance topping. Well, I think Rick, you mentioned last night. Every time they throw it into him, it's an automatic two. Uh, they, they said the Air Force guy said he's very hard to guard. He's physical. He's a lefty. We know all those things. Get him the ball. Get him some post touches. And, and I, I think that's the key uh, for New Mexico to win tonight. I would, before we get to tonight, you know, obviously it was a 30 point win. By the way, Rick, good call on covering last night because I took uh, um, Air Force to cover the 15 and a half, 14 and a half uh, or 15. Um, I'm going to sound like old man and no fun league here. Uh, I, this yesterday with air with like Jalen house grittying and them celebrating air force, just walked into your house and kicked your ass. You had to win yesterday. You have a bigger game today and they act like they won the tournament. I thought that was really weird. Um, I don't usually like to nitpick at that type of things. I just thought within 24 hours, your season can be over you know, acting like, you know, you're undefeated and you've beat these guys before. And I, I mean, obviously you had, but they came in like Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan and you get punched in the mouth. Uh, everybody's got a plan and you get punched in the mouth. Um, I, I didn't, I, I thought everything yesterday, uh, you know, top and played well, Donovan Dent played well. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Um, that's enough about yesterday. Enough about my old man running and telling the kids to get off my lawn. Uh, Rick, you are saying you think that the Lobos need to have a big night and stay out of foul trouble. And the one thing I just wanted to remind everybody was when Max Rice came into the pit, 12 of 20, 35 points. Um, that's not here nor there because that was back in uh, January. But Rick, yeah, you say that you think that the Lobo bigs need to stay out of foul trouble. Right. Last time Dagenhardt and Stanley ate us up for about the tune of 47 points inside and um, really outplayed uh, the Lobos. Toppin did have a good game with 21 points last time. But um, Nelly, uh, you know, he is a great d defender, but he's going to have to stay out of foul trouble. And Toppin's been doing a lot better job as of late. And as for House, we, we don't know if he's willing to stay out of foul trouble or if he's going to go over the top again tonight. Um, when you look at Boise State, they're kind of playing with house money right now, right? Even if they win the this tournament, I don't think their seed in the NCAA tournament would really improve that much. And I don't think that they're really pressing as much to win this game. So maybe they play free and wide open. Maybe UNM is a little um, tense to start off. I think it's going to be about which team comes with the energy and um, are the Lobos going to turn down the inside looks for outside bad shots like we've seen House do time and time again? Or are they going to learn um, what their strength is like we saw last game? So as long as the bigs are involved on both ends, I think UNM can win. But um, Stanley, you know, really played well against UNM last time. And that was kind of a, the X factor for them. So I look for the bigs down low to have a battle. Uh, we've got about five minutes to tip off. We talked about a lot more things than we should have. To everybody that's listening, thank you very much. Um, just a heads up there. I think this is on Twitter, YouTube Live, um, or YouTube, uh, making things up as I go. Um, Jacob, I'm going to go to you real quick. Two things, and 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 sorry for time purposes, uh, keep it concise. Um, you think the key to victory is keeping Boise under 80 points. They scored 86 here in Albuquerque in that first game. Um, and then to C-123, anyone know why the spread flip from Boise being favorites to UNM? Vegas always knows something that we don't. So those two uh, those two questions for you there. Yeah, well, uh, I think that Boise's got to stay under 80. I mean, we've scored uh, close to 80 in both games, and that obviously seems to be the number that we need to keep them uh, under. I think that this game is going to be – it's going to favor UNM off the, you know, off the bat. Uh, every team that played yesterday came out of the gates uh, playing pretty well. You got to take advantage of being the team that's been in action yesterday. Uh, and this team's coming in cold. They haven't played. Uh, so I think a, a, a first half 
being getting a lead in the first half and going into the into the half up is going to be uh, crucial. And then uh, the the spread flipping, I think it's. I mean, you could kind of see today what's going on, right? Uh, I think that now makes it three for three and underdogs covering uh, for the Mountain West today, and it is covering three for three, one outright. Um, so the Lobos were getting a point and a half to start. It's probably been bet down to a pick them, and it's probably because of those reasons that we're talking about right now. So that's what I would assume why the line flipped. <laughs> there you go, Ryan. UNM wins by 20. Are you going to eat horse shit? Uh, <laughs> n- uh, man, I'm not, you know, the New York Giants fan isn't getting his inner Philadelphia. Uh, very quickly, <laughs> very quickly. For um, the, you know, I was thinking, where am I going to find horse shit? Then I remember I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It should be super easy. Um, predictions for the game. Um, I don't know what the line jumped to in the last, like you said, it's probably a pick em at this point. Um, Rick, I'll throw it to you. You were spot on yesterday. So I am 0-1. You are 1-0. And I think your UNLV champion is also out already, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. My bracket sucked. Anyway, um, I'll pick uh, UNM to win this one. This is the most meaningful game of the year. Um, if they don't win this, season's pretty much done. So with that being on the line, I think they can pull it out. They should have it going like Jacob said after um, playing in that gym last night. I think they can carry the momentum forward and cover. Ed, to you. New Mexico 78-73. I think they're going to get it done. As Rick said, they know what's on the line, what's at stake. Uh, you, you, if you don't win, you're not in. You know, There's all the speculation that they're going to take six teams. If they don't win, they don't deserve to be in. If they win, I think they have a solid chance to get in. I think UNM gets it done. Mr. Neff, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going with UNM tonight. Um, and, you know, I'm anything but a homer. But, uh, you know, I just think that the way that these teams that are have something to play for uh, to cement themselves into the tournament, in our case, get into the tournament, have been playing better than the teams that are comfortably in at this point. Um, so I think that the Lobos come out with an urgency tonight. Uh, I don't know what they'll win by. I think it's going to be a close game still. I don't see them running away with it. I, you know, Ed's got them at a five point victory. I think that, you know, it's going to be somewhere between a two and a five point victory for UNM. Uh, before we sign off here, I want to thank you guys. Rick Thompson from the Bay Area. You can follow him on Twitter at rthompson1050. I don't know if you guys are going to be tweeting tonight. It is a late night. Jacob Neff at NM Sports Cap or on the old X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Mr. Ed Nunez, <laughs> hope you're alive and well. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. I'm sure you wanted to talk some Lobo men's basketball. So thanks for joining us. Um, I am giving my prediction before we sign off here. If you're not from Albuquerque and you're listening to us, I'm like the biggest, uh, speaking of horse expletive, uh, I mean, I take a big fat dump on UNM all the time. I just think there's something in the air. uh, And I'm going to quote this guy, subject 62. I feel the magic in the air tonight. Um, I, 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 everything that's gone on today in this conference and what's gone on around the country. Um, I would like to talk about Lobo basketball one more day. I'm going to take UNM to come out and, uh, the old Michael Strahan saying coming out and stomping that ass. Uh, we will talk to you guys maybe later tonight. If not, definitely preview the game tomorrow. Everybody have a good one. Thank you for joining us. You guys, thanks for joining. Enjoy the game and enjoy the rest of the conference tournaments.